welcome back to another week on the Brush by Brandy YouTube channel. This week we're going to be working on this little piece here and this is such a cute little box. So I often pick these up anytime I see them uh, that are good quality and good condition. I will pick these up. This one actually came from a thrift store but I looked on the bottom and I saw the maker's mark on here that it's actually made by Pottery Barn. It's a musical jewelry box. It does have a ballerina inside and she dances. Let me get this open and I'll show you guys. How cute is this? But I often take these boxes and I'll use them as sort of little samplers. Anytime I want to try new techniques, um, new products, and see what they're going to look like together. So new product was exactly what I had on the table. These are the new H2O transfers from Redesign with Prima. And you can see how beautiful that application is. It came out really pretty on this little box. I've also got some secrets to a little bit of this metallic on the edges, but this color combination from Wise Owl Paint came out just beautiful. I can't wait to show you guys the process. And these are great. Anytime you see them, I recommend picking them up because you can practice different techniques, color combinations, anything like that. And it, it makes these one of a kind. I give them away as gifts a lot, and I really think they're special. So we're gonna give this one a makeover this week and see how we get to this look. Let's get started. Here's where I started with this adorable jewelry box. I started out by giving it a really good cleaning. I need to clean off that price tag from the thrift store um, and I removed all the hardware. And then this one had an inscription on the top. It actually had a little girl's name. And so I just used a razor blade to scrape that lettering off the top. And then I'm gonna give it a sanding using my surf prep sander to make sure this is nice and smooth and there's no traces of that lettering left. I'm really excited to work on this box. It actually has beautiful construction. Pottery Barn did a really nice job making this one. So I'm thrilled to get my hands on it. The hardware on it is absolutely beautiful. And that's one of the signs that I can tell of a well-made jewelry box. I also usually look for boxes that have their velvet lining in really good condition because I don't like to have to replace that. So as long as I can give it a good cleaning or just spiff it up with a little brushing and vacuuming, then those are the boxes that I'd wanna work on. The color combination that I chose for this one is Wise Owl Paint and the colors are Abyss and Vintage Duck Egg and it's a beautiful combination. I just felt like two colors was enough for this box because I didn't want to make it overly busy and I am going to accent with some gilding waxes. I did scuff sand this one when I sanded this piece smooth and I'm not worried about it bleeding so I chose not to use a primer on this one. I think I'm going to be more than fine on it. I'm going to go ahead and paint right over my scuff sanded surface. This is just my first coat of paint, so it doesn't need to be perfect, but I'm gonna decide my basic color layout, where I want my shadowing and highlights to be on this piece. And I really wanna accentuate some of the curvature of this one. It's got a curve on the front of it that I especially wanna look like a nice highlight, and then I want the other sides to match. Where those highlights are, are also gonna set off my transfer as a background. When I choose colors to blend, I try to choose colors that are similar in tone, that are gonna to work together. The closer in tone the colors are, the easier they're gonna to be to blend together. This was a beautiful color combination. I highly recommend this, these two colors together if you're looking for a combo in the blues. I'm brushing this on using my Klingon brushes. Um, I did bring out some fairly smaller brushes. I usually use the S50, which is a good medium sized brush, but I brought out some smaller ones because I'm working on a small surface. This is when it's nice to have a variety of different size brushes when you need to get into different size areas. I missed a spot on this back. It did have a label on it, so I wanna make sure I scrape that off and make sure that's really well cleaned as well. I usually do that when I'm taking off all the hardware. Make sure all the little foam pads and anything are all removed with a razor blade scraper before I do my painting. It's really normal on this first coat of paint that it's gonna look a little bit scary, especially since I'm going over a white background using some pretty dark colors. It's normal that I'm gonna see a little bit of that white peeking through. I know that my second coat is going to give me the full coverage that I'm after, so I really just need to get these colors laid on, and on my next coat, I'll really perfect this. I'm going to paint around all four sides of my box, but I do need to leave a surface that I can rest both of these pieces on. So the undersides of them, I will come back and paint those later once the rest of the sides are dry and I can flip the box upside down. Once my first coat is nice and dry, it's time to come back and do my second coat on this piece. And this is where I'm really gonna pay attention to perfecting those blends. I did add a light mist of water to my surface and that's because I've got this chalk synthesis paint as my base. It dries with a nice matte chalky finish, but that also can make my brush tend to stick over the top of it. And so I add that little mist of water just to give a little lubrication so my brush will glide over the top. 
I'm using a combination of brushing and also a little bit of dabbing to try to get the smooth blend that I'm looking for. This is a pretty small surface, so if I were to use brushing, I'm not gonna be able to get it over this tiny little area as well. So that little bit of dabbing, I can use a stippling motion and work these colors together. Then as my paint starts to dry, I call this the sweet spot. This is when I really love to blend the paint. It's not wet, but it's not quite dry. It's almost a little tiny bit sticky in between. This is when I come back with my clean dry brush and I'll work that over the top, brushing in various directions to whisk away some of those brush strokes and work the colors together. In this case, I felt like I needed a little bit more of my dark color around the edges. So I just went ahead and brought that back in and then I'm gonna work that color back in again. It's really common to have this back and forth. Sometimes you need to add more colors and go back and blend again. It's not always right the first time, so try not to get frustrated with yourself when you're working colors together. And then again, when I find that sweet spot, I'm gonna come back with my clean, dry brush and work these colors together. And that gives me the beautiful blend that I was after with a really subtle highlight in the center. So this color combination was inspired by these new H2O transfers from Redesign with Prima. These are really fun to apply, you guys. Um, they do involve water. So the first thing I did was cut my transfer down to the size of my box. I wanted part of this to go up onto the lid and part of it's gonna stay down on the base. So I just sliced it where my, um, where my seam was on my box and I'm gonna save that second half for the lid. Um, I'm gonna place my transfer where it belongs, add a little bit of moisture to the surface place my transfer and then I'm going to wet over the top of the transfer. I'm going to let it sit for about three minutes. Um, you can kind of pick up an edge to see if it started to release yet and once I see that release start happening I can lightly slide that paper backing off and it's going to leave my transfer on the surface. Really easy to apply. These are very beginner friendly. This was a new product to play around with and so I also learned a lot doing this box. I practiced putting them on curves because it's got that curvature on the front. The curve was a little more challenging because you have to get the backing paper to curve to the surface. Um, so I did learn a lot about that. I needed to be a little more patient with a curved surface on these, um, but I really had fun applying them and this little box was a perfect way to learn a brand new product. On the flat surfaces, I would say these H2O transfers were far easier than a regular rub-on transfer to apply. These would be great in classes or even with children. Um, they would be a lot of fun to apply and I think a lot of people would feel really successful with minimal work applying these. The colors in these transfers are incredibly saturated. Once you remove that backing sheet, you can see the full color saturation. I did apply these over raw paint and I didn't have any problems, but if you're worried about putting water on your paint finish, you can also go ahead and seal your paint and apply the transfer over the sealed paint. With my transfer all applied to all the sides of my box that I wanted it on, I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of gilding wax. And this color is called Mystic Turquoise and it's absolutely beautiful. It's got a color changing effect that kind of changes from shades of brown to shades of blue, depending on how you shift it. And it was perfect over the top of these blues to just add a little bit of metallic touch that hits the light just right when you turn the box certain ways. With my waxes all on, I went ahead and sealed this in two coats of Wiesel matte varnish and the end result is absolutely beautiful. This was a really fun little project, you guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. You can find links to everything I used, including the new H2O transfers from Redesign with Prima in the description for this post. You can find more Brush by Brandy on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and YouTube and on my website at brushbybrandy.com. And don't forget to click that subscribe button for weekly tutorials here at Brush by Brandy on YouTube.